Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video we're going to be talking about the slinger bag and in particular the widely discussed topic of topspin. Now I've had my slinger bag for well over a year now and I've loved every minute of using it and experimenting with different drills. I speak to lots of people about the slinger bag whether it be that they've got the slinger bag and they're looking for ideas for new drills or whether they've got questions about the slinger bag because they're considering buying one. But the overwhelming topic that keeps being raised is the fact that the ball is launched with only topspin. So in this video we're going to talk about that, how you you can use it to your advantage and how you can adjust the settings to get the best out of the ball machine. So let's check it out. Welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Ashley Neves and I'm a professional tennis coach based here in the UK. I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, giving tennis tips to coaches, players and parents. As I mentioned, I've had my slinger bag for over a year now and I've made lots of content using it. So if you've got a slinger bag or considering getting one, check out some of my other videos to see how I like to use it. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of the slinger bag. It's a very simple design, which is one of the reasons why I like it. It's very easy to use and very easy to adapt to suit your needs. Currently, the slinger bag is the world's best-selling ball machine due to the fact that it prides itself on portability and affordability. It's one of the cheapest ball machines on the market and for what you're paying, in my opinion, is a fantastic product. But due to the fact that Slinger Bag wanted to keep the product affordable, the mechanics of the device are more simple than some of the more expensive ball machines. The machine only has one wheel which launches the ball. Because of that, the wheel is spinning the ball in one direction. So if you imagine you've got a wheel spinning here, that's going to cause the ball to turn in one direction, creating top spin. Some of the more expensive ball machines will have two wheels above and below the ball, which neutralize each other, creating a more flat trajectory as the ball leaves the machine. Some really expensive machines actually have settings where you can adjust the top wheel and the bottom wheel to create slice, top spin or flat shots. However, the slinger bag only having one wheel means that all of your shots have top spin. However, this top spin can be adjusted through the speed setting. Now by increasing the speed setting, you're going to be not only increasing the speed of the ball as it leaves the ball machine, but you'll also be increasing the amount of topspin on the ball too. When the machine is throwing the ball out at the highest speed setting, it's quite a challenging ball to return. Although it looks as though it's traveling slowly through the air, the amount of topspin when it hits the ground accelerates the ball towards you. If you put the machine on the slowest setting, not only does the ball travel a lot slower, but it actually minimizes the amount of topspin on the ball, making for a much easier shot to deal with and great for either beginner tennis players or for players that are warming up, want to groove their shots or work on something technical. I tend to use a very slow setting quite often because it allows me to set up the ball machine to do lots of different drills and to practice lots of different strokes. So it's important to understand that the fact that the ball machine fires out topspin means that some settings are going to be quite unrealistic to what you're going to be receiving when you're playing in a tennis match or when you're playing with somebody at the other end of the court. However, we've also got to remember Remember that it is a ball machine and it's not a human being. If you're looking to develop your match play skills, there's nothing better than playing tennis matches. The slinger bag is a great tool to give you lots of repetitions. It's awesome for a workout, but also if you're looking to work on something technical, actually you just need that ball fed in nicely to you consistently so that you can get into a nice groove and to practice your strokes. My advice if you have got a ball machine is to make sure that you balance it with some match play and some hitting with human beings. In my opinion, a ball machine is a fantastic piece of kit if you're a tennis player that has access to tennis courts. First of all, I'm going to talk through some of the settings that you can use to adapt the topspin to make things easier or tougher for you depending on what you want to work on. Then I'm going to talk about some of the technical considerations that you need to think about when using it. So as I mentioned, one of the settings that I like to use is to have the ball machine on the slowest setting and have it set up at the same end of the court to where I am. This acts as if you've got a coach on the court hand feeding you tennis balls, allowing you to get into a nice rhythm with nice easy strokes. The top spin will be quite low and the ball speed will be nice and slow too, giving you lots of time on the ball. This is great for beginners, 
for anybody warming up or if you want to work on your technique. If you want a setting that's slightly more challenging but not too unrealistic, you can move the speed setting up to between a third and a half. Play around with the trajectory and the interval settings to tailor it to what you'd like to work on. But generally, if you've got the ball speed at one third to one half, the ball is going to be a lot more challenging. Although the ball will travel slowly through the air towards you, as it hits the ground, it will accelerate towards you, helping you to work on dealing with topspin. If you want to increase the depth of the feed, Rather than ramming up the speed all the way to the top, you can simply increase the angle to shoot the ball slightly higher over the net and that can allow for the ball to go a bit deeper and to challenge you in that way. When having it on that setting, I like to position the machine somewhere around the service line on the opposite end of the court so that it feels like I'm receiving a ball from somebody at the other end. It's coming in slightly faster and slightly heavier. Finally, if you want to work on those really heavy topspin shots, move the ball machine all the way back to the baseline at the other end of the court Put the speed all the way up to the top and adjust the trajectory to a height and a depth that suits what you'd like to work on. You'll find that as soon as that ball hits the ground on your side of the court, it really kicks towards you, making for a very challenging shot that travels quite fast and feels quite heavy when you hit it. But it's great for those really advanced players that want to work on dealing with heavy topspin. Although using the slinger bag on the highest speed setting with lots of topspin isn't super realistic, it can help you to develop some other skills that are important on the tennis court. When the ball's coming in that fast with that much topspin, it forces you to have a really early preparation. And actually for me when I'm playing, it forces me to have a more compact swing which is going to be great for things like the return of serve, especially a first serve when you're very limited with time and that ball's coming in much faster. If I can learn to deal with the pace with a much more compact swing, practicing redirecting that pace is going to help me on return of serve and dealing with any type of speed that comes in towards me. So although I wouldn't suggest using it in every training session, it's a good thing to do now and again to help you to become more adaptable on different types of oncoming ball. So finally, I'm going to talk about some of the technical considerations that you need to think about when using each different setting. Now, if you've watched my beginners, intermediates and advanced videos for the Slinger Bag, you will have seen some of the different drills that I like to do. But generally speaking, the number one priority that you should think about, no matter what your level, is to make sure that you're preparing your racket and your positioning as early as possible. Now for you, when using the slinger bag, a visual cue is as soon as you see the ball leave the machine, that's a cue for you to prepare your racket and to start your foot preparation as well so that you've got time on the ball when the ball bounces. If you've got the machine set at a very slow setting at the same end of the court as you, although the ball's traveling slowly, because it's quite close to you, you're still going to be limited with time. So it's a really great practice to get you practicing your early preparation as soon as the ball leaves the machine. You can do this on your forehand, on your backhand, whether you're practicing your volleys, all of the shots that you practice, as soon as the ball leaves the machine, take that racket back and get that nice unit turn. Once you start to move the machine to the other end of the court, although you're going to be increasing the speed setting, you're actually going to have a bit more time to prepare because the ball's traveling from a longer distance. So use that time to really focus on giving yourself enough space behind the ball because the ball's coming in with topspin, it's going to move towards you a lot more than a flat shot would. So alongside preparing your racket early, you want to make sure that you've got enough space behind the bounce for that ball to move on to you. A common mistake that I see when players use the slinger bag for the first time is they set themselves up way too close to where the ball is bouncing. So my number one tip if you're trying to increase the speed of the feed is to make sure that you get enough distance between the bounce and yourself. Not only will this give you extra space behind the ball, but it will give you a little bit more time to prepare for your shots. After playing with the slinger bag, because it's traveling quite fast after the bounce, your preparation is going to be even sharper than it was before. So when you go out onto the match court, you may feel like you've got a lot more time on the ball. And that's a good thing. You can use that time to make sure that your positioning is perfect. It can help to give you more options and it can just help you to feel a lot more comfortable. My final suggestion is a great one for junior players or for adults that are struggling to deal with the top spin. Now, although the ball machine only caters for a standard tennis ball, if you're using a low compression green or orange ball, 
that is exactly the same size as a tennis ball, most of them tend to be, you can actually use that in the slinger bag too. And that can actually take some of the topspin off the ball and make it a lot more achievable. So if you're a junior player using the slinger, I would suggest using a low compression orange or green ball to start off with. Just make sure the ball is the right size. Don't put red felt tennis balls, those balls that are slightly bigger than a normal tennis ball because it just clogs up the machine. So there you go. They were some of my tips to help you to deal with the topspin that comes out of the slinger bag and to make the most of it. Just remember you're playing with a machine, not a human being. So use this to improve your technique, your fitness and the physical side of your game, but make sure you balance it with playing humans. When you're playing against human beings, you can work more on the mental side of your game and the tactical side of your game. Get the right balance of both and you'll get the best out of your tennis. Good luck with using the Slinger Bag. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on. And if you wanna see more videos like this, head over to my YouTube channel. Good luck.